Our first scripture is taken from the book of Genesis, the uh, first, four chap first four verses of chapter 12. Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed, as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. Our second scripture is taken from the Gospel of John. It's chapter 4, excuse me, chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher, we, our teacher, come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So it is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, that that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I told you, you, you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. Here ends the reading in King James Version. <laughs> <laughs> So today, as we move into the second Sunday in Lent, we continue our series on taking part in the boot camp for the soul. Now last week we talked about the need for change. Specifically, we wanted to make sure our changes were things that brought us closer to God. This week we're going to talk about the need to reset or start over. Now I've often talked about how much I love sports, Sports were a big part of my life growing up, and they're still a big part of my life now. However, there is something else that I had that I've always loved that I haven't really talked about from the pulpit, and that is video games. 
Now you need to remember I'm part of the generation that grew up during a time when the first home consoles were being made. And I can remember the countless hours I spent playing Nintendo growing up. And if you were to sit me down in front of a Nintendo today, uh, playing Super Mario Brothers, I know still exactly where all the hidden secrets are in that game. And I haven't played it in probably 25 years. But that was the level of dedication that I had to video games as a child. Now perhaps you remember, maybe you don't know, but maybe you do, on the Nintendo itself there were two buttons. The first was the power button. After you put your game in and pushed it down, you push the power button and then hopefully your game would turn on. Now the other button that was part of the console was the reset button. Now the reset button was the bane of my existence as a child. You see, in a lot of those old games, you couldn't save your progress. So you might be playing them for hours to try and make it to the end of it, and then someone or something just happens to bump that reset button a little bit, or your mom told you to clean your room and you said, sure, in 20 minutes, and then an hour later she comes in and says, I told you to clean your room, and hits that reset button, as well she should have. But all that effort would be gone in an instant as soon as that reset button got hit. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, Pastor, we knew that you were a little bit nerdy, but we didn't know that you were that nerdy. Or you might be wondering, what has this to do with anything of importance? Well, to a 10-year-old that was on the last castle in Mario Brothers and had finally made it to that last stage, if someone were to accidentally hit the reset button, it felt like it was the end of the world. Now we can feel like that too when we're forced at, a, at facing a reset in our own lives. When there is a change that is coming and we have to start over, it really feels like it's the end of the world. Especially if we had put in great effort to get to the point where we are at. Now Abram probably felt that pain and more. In our first scripture for today, we find Abram, who will become known as Abraham, being called on by the Lord. God calls him to leave his country and his people and to venture into the wilderness. Now this task would have been hard enough for a young person. And maybe a young person would have even viewed it as an adventure. But Abram was not a young person. He was 75 years old when God called him to leave his home. Now I want you to think about that. I know we have several members that are around that age. Or may I didn't want to say that, or maybe beyond. But I want you to imagine that God is now calling you to leave your home and move to the desert in Nevada. And I don't mean Las Vegas, I mean the wilderness of Nevada. How excited are you to go? Well, oh, maybe now, maybe now. Today's maybe not a good example with all the snow and cold on the ground. But I'm guessing mostly we wouldn't be very excited about it. I'm not quite 40 years old myself, and I have to tell you the prospect of uprooting myself and my family and moving to a place that is completely unknown and leaving my extended family behind, it's not just daunting, it is downright terrifying. But we find that Abram is given a great promise by God. If you're willing to reset your life and follow what I call you to do, I will make your descendants a great nation. You see, the reward for Abram being willing to reset his life and follow God is that God is called, what he's called him to do, it is great. That reward is great. And in the end, we know Abram does follow God and becomes Abraham. And his people do become a great nation. Because he is willing to hit the reset button, even at an age when most of us are really settled in our path. Now in the second scripture for today, we find Jesus talking with Nicodemus. And as they're conversing, Jesus tells Nicodemus that a man must be born again if they hope to ever enter the kingdom of heaven. And Nicodemus is very confused. What do you mean born again? How can a, ma a man crawl into his mother's womb and be born again for the second time. Now often we read his words, we hear his words, and we think, what is wrong with Nicodemus that that is what he thinks Jesus is talking about? How can he possibly misunderstand it, what Jesus is saying so badly? 
But you have to remember that this is the first time that Nicodemus is hearing about being reborn. This concept is completely new to him. It makes sense at least a little bit, a, a little bit for us that he would think that Jesus is talking about being reborn physically. So Jesus does go on to explain to him, no, Nicodemus, you need to re- be reborn spiritually. You need to believe in the Son of God and be reborn through the water and the Spirit. You need to know that I'm going to be the sacrifice for you and that God loves you so much that he's going to do this for you so that you're, if you're willing to reset your life, he's going to make sure that life goes on forever with him. Now we find ourselves needing to hit that reset button on our own lives quite a bit. Well, I shouldn't speak for all of you, but I know that I find the need to hit that reset button on my own spiritual life. And I'm guessing since you're a human, maybe you do too. See, just as God made a promise to Abram if he's willing to reset, there are promises that we are given as well. You see, God calls us to reset our lives when he is telling us that we need to start over. He has also made the promise to be with us as well. Just like he promised to be with Abram and his descendants, he promises to be with you. Indeed, we are part of that promise because we are his descendants. We are told in Romans that we, the Gentiles, have been grafted onto the tree of Israel. We know, we have to know that starting over is almost always a scary prospect. But the God of all things is willing to be there with you when you start over. And we know that God keeps his promises. And being with us is just one. Now when we consider the need to reset and know how scary it can be, sometimes it is the thing that we have to do or we need most in our lives. Albert Einstein is, uh, has a famous quote that is attributed to him, and it's this. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So is that where you're finding yourself this spiritually this Lenten season? Are you doing the same thing over and over again and thinking something's going to change? Are you being tied down by something that you just can't seem to let go of? Maybe you're just feeling frustrated because you're not seeing results that you think you should be. For example, perhaps you're someone that is dedicated to reading the upper room. Now hear me, church. The Upper Room is a great publication, and I do encourage you to read it. And I'm also thankful to the people that provide it for us every month. So thank you, Ralph and Sue, for providing that for this church every month. However, say that reading the Upper Room is the only form of devotion or study that you are doing. You can say, look, Lord, I'm doing what I can to follow your word. I'm making sure that I'm doing my devotional every day. Why am I not feeling as though I'm growing spiritually? Well, perhaps it's time for you to hit reset on what you're doing. Maybe you need to get involved in a Bible study with other people to talk things out. Maybe you need to get out and do something that is active ministry. Maybe you need to think about joining the choir and expressing your love of God through music. You see, when we allow the things to become too routine for us, we get into a rut. And we have to be willing to reset what we're doing in order to make sure we're growing spiritually. Now, one of the things that I found out as a kid playing video games is that sometimes, when you hit the reset button and start over, you find a whole new way to play the game. You find new parts of that game that you didn't even know were there before because you were forced to start over again. Just like that, if you hit the reset button and start a new way of worship, I believe you're going to find things that are different about your relationship with the Lord that you didn't know before. And isn't it worth trying something new out to see if there is some way you can grow spiritually from it? Now finally, maybe you find yourself feeling so lost Spiritually, that you don't even know where to begin anymore. Well, just like Nicodemus, there is good news for you as well. See, we have the ultimate reset button in our lives. We have Jesus. So if you're feeling as if you've hit the end, know that Jesus is there 
always with you with a chance to start over. You just need to be reborn just like he told Nicodemus. And if you don't know how to start, the first step is that you need to ask him into your heart. Let Jesus know you're ready to follow him as your Lord and Savior. And if you need help with this or anything else, what you need to do, I'd love to talk to you more about it. Now, if you've already accepted Jesus and you still feel like you need to start over again, well, good news. You can start over again as well. All it takes is confessing your sins to him, asking forgiveness, and then turning away from doing those sins again. Just like that calculator this morning, you hit that button and you turn around. Start over. So this week as we move forward in our spiritual boot camp, know that having to reset isn't always a bad thing. That God will be with you through it all. And that Jesus is always waiting for you to take those first steps again, to start again. Or he's always waiting there for you, for you to start over again the hundredth time, if that is what you need. My challenge for you this week is this. What is one thing that you can reset in your life so that you can grow spiritually this Lenten season? Do it this week.